from Carver Arena in the Peoria Civic Center, 25 Sports presents Bradley Basketball. This afternoon, the Braves collide with the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa. This 25 Sports exclusive is brought to you in part by Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. By Coors Light, the silver bullet. There's no slowing down with the silver bullet. By Cohen's, downstate Illinois' largest home furnisher. By SK Chevrolet, the Chevy dealer that offers you free service loaners. And by North Point Video in Peoria and Plaza Video in Morton. We're live from the Carver Arena, where Bradley, who has won 17 of 18 games this year, still faces today a battle for first place and the upper hand in the Missouri Valley Conference as the powerful Golden Hurricane of Tulsa challenged the Bradley Braves. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Frank Bassoni, working along with Mike Dimmick. Welcome to the game. And Mike, the week that's gone by has been the great Percy Hawkins show. It's the week that the Hawk put Bradley nationwide. It started a week ago at Drake when Jimmy Les threw a full court pass to the Hawk, hung around in the lane and put it in at the buzzer. That was for a win. And then last Monday night in Dayton, they needed to stay in the game. Again, it's to Hawkins. This time, it's a jump shot from about 23 feet away. And this one goes in also. Bradley wins in overtime, as we all know by now. They've gone on to go 17-1. and one. And Now the Sporting News has chosen Hawkins as the National Player of the Week. If you've got a National Player of the Week, it's a joke if he's not the Player of the Week. You better believe it. Now we've got to get to today's business. Tulsa brings a fine team in here with a different coach and a different style. The one thing people out there are going to be surprised is the different style Tulsa plays with. Same results. They're 13-3, and three, but they'll slow it down, take good shots. Not the run and gun of Nolan Richardson. It's going to be interesting. We're going to have the starting lineups and then the play-by-play -play for you. Coming up, Bradley and Tulsa, stay with us. For years, Howard Blevins used AT&T Long Distance. Will you accept the charger? And each month, when he received his AT&T bill. Yes, operator. I'll accept the charges. He accepted the charges. But then Howard discovered Telesave. Now he gets a bigger charge from talking longer and saving more. And when he said, I've switched to Telesave, AT&T was shocked. Woo! Take charge of your long distance with Telesave. What's up at your Peoria area Chevy dealers? Inventory. The selection of new cars and trucks is up, way up, and we're dealing. But what makes it even more exciting is what's down. Interest rates. GMAC financing is all the way down to 7.9%. And 7.9% includes the best of the line. Chevy Cavaliers, selected celebrities. Chevy Novus, selected full-size and S10 pickups, plus El Camino. It's 7.9%, including the best of the line, right now, at your Peoria area Chevy dealers. At the movies, tonight at 6.30 on TV 25. The Carver Arena is alive because the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, 13-3 on the season and 3-1 and in the Valley, the defending Valley champion is here to play Bradley, who has the third best record in the nation behind North Carolina, Duke, Memphis State, of course, Oklahoma, Duke is now gone from the list of the undefeated as Carolina eliminated them today. Bradley 17-1 on the season, 4-0 in the league, 20th AP, 19th UPI, and then take your pick in the other polls. They're listed in all of them, save Sports Illustrated, but two teams today have combined records of 30 and 4, and there you see the two principal polls referred to by the media and press around America. Bradley knows they have a chore. This is David Moss, 23, 6, 7 forward from San Antonio, Texas. And in a young man playing against a team from his home neighborhood, Donald Powell, the sophomore at 6, 8. He's pumped up. The leading scorer for the Golden Hurricane is 35, a sophomore, Tracy Moore. 6'5", a sophomore out of Oklahoma City. From Havana, Trevor Trempe. Sophomore. Does a little bit of everything for the Braves. Six ten, two thirty, from Fort Worth, Texas. Number 40, Anthony Fobbs. Fobbs has put on an inch and gained some weight since last year. He can be tough on the board. Mike Williams, 6'8", the senior. 
needs three points to achieve 1,000 as a Brave. Here's a 6'2 guard from Kingston, North Carolina that's in there to harass Jim Les. Herb Suggs, 12. S-U-G-G-S. -G -G Speaking of Jim Les, he leads the high-powered, horsepower guard contingent of Bradley, the 5'11 captain from Niles, Notre Dame. He just yelled in the locker room, this is the main event. Byron Boudreau, great athlete out of Lafayette, Louisiana, is a 6'3 junior for Wichita and for the Braves. The National Player of the Week, the Skywalker, Percy Hawkins. Hawkins averaging 20.3 points per game. Dick Versace in his eighth year at Bradley. J.D. Barnett in his first year at Tulsa. Barnett came from Virginia Commonwealth. If you have not heard of him, he is not just some unknown. His teams have been in the NCAA's five years when they are at Virginia Commonwealth. The referees for today's game, Ron Spittler and Paul Caster. Paul Caster is a fill-in for Pee Wee Summers, who has originally signed the game. Caster's from o Omaha. Well... A big house has gathered at Carver Arena. They're on their feet. And Mike, it would be remiss if we didn't take a moment to give very quick get well wishes to Bradley Assistant Athletic Director Joe Stoll, who is recuperating in the hospital from an accident. Of course, there also from Bradley, Jim Spink, Carl Gross, State Representative Fred Turk. Hope he's getting better. And Jeffrey Bloom, the son of the late Senator and Diane Bloom, all recuperating. Hope they're watching the game and can enjoy it and I'll be better soon. And all of us at TV25 pass along our best to all those people, and I think we are ready to go now. The Braves are. There's a look at Tulsa. Barnett, among other things, has been called one of the most intense coaches in the nation. Sports Illustrated voted him one of the five coaches most likely to break a folding chair in half or something like that. He says it's a reputation he shouldn't have got, that uh, he hasn't got a technical in the last three years, but he admits he's very intense. He cares about his basketball very much, and he wants that pass along to his players. We'll see if we see it in his team today. He says his basketball philosophy is this simple, defense and discipline. He's an execution coach, and a good one. Bradley off to a thrilling 17-1 beginning. Spittler has the ball in the middle. Fobbs is 40, Williams is 3. For the Valley lead. J.D. Barnett's teams play man-to-man. -man. That's what they're out in right now, but they do a lot of switching also. Les missed the first one. Boudreaux at 6-3 pushes it up. The Gold Rush don't run as much as they used to, but they still will take the break if you give it to them. Ball will go out of bounds to Tulsa. Although they don't break, they do like to rush up the floor in a hurry and, and try to get good shots. Guys you want to look for, number 35, Tracy Moore. He averages about 19 a game. They just moved him to forward a couple of games ago. He's been getting more shots that way. Bradley starts zone. 1-3-1, one, one, and now Tulsa will set up a 1-2-2 two, two offensive set probably. Two-guard front now. The Hurricane patient. They will take that shot clock down a few times today. 21 is Boudreaux. That's Moss in the corner. He's a good player, especially defensively. Listen to the crowd with 20 seconds on the shot clock. Very high decibel crowd and tough Bradley defense. 10 on the shot clock. Moss with 5. Good. Can't fault the defense. They did a great job. Moss had to shoot over 3 people and got it home. He had 10 Moss against Southern Illinois. Suggs against Les. Moore against Trempe. Donald Powell deflected that ball. Suggs has got it. Look how disciplined that was. A year ago, that would have been a shot. Inside Bob. Missed the point blank layup. And a foul on the Braves. Check it from the bull rush. Looks like they got Tracy Moore sneaking inside of Trimpy. No, no they got it on Fobbs on the foul. That's one thing they said Fobbs improved this year was his tendency to get in foul difficulty. Two to nothing, Tulsa, we've just started. One thing we should comment on, Frank, is how much different Tulsa looks. The uniforms are just plain old blue. Powell sends it out to left. 
Hawkins hasn't had the ball yet. Now he has. Suggs has it. Tulsa comes the other way. Boudreaux is fancy with the ball. Boudreaux will handle the ball quite a lot, but he's not much of a shooter. Maybe the only guy in the court right now that's not much of a shooter. He just rolled one home. <laughs> Naturally. Oh boy, as soon as it went out of my mouth, the ball dropped. Four to nothing, Tulsa, man to man. When the reporters asked J.D. Barnett how much man his team played last year, he said 62%. Ball loose inside. Williams couldn't get it down. Tulsa comes this way. Tracy Moore. Yes. And out of the block. Six to nothing. The Hurricanes. Well, the fans might get tired if they stand on their feet waiting for that first basket. It's 17-25 now. Bradley hasn't gotten really good shots against this man-to-man -man yet. And it goes to Williams. That's one. First bucket of the night, and now I believe he's only a point away from the 1,000-point mark for his career. That's what it is, 17-13 to go here in the half. Earlier today, Indiana State beat Wichita State 67-54. to 54. 43, Brian Riley, 6'11 and 220 in the game, a junior for Suggs. One other score in the Valley that's almost incredible. Three minutes to go down at Horton Fieldhouse. Illinois State, 15, West Texas, Eight. Tracy Moore missed. Oh. The Braves fill up the, the lanes on the fast break. Oh, Suggs with a nice play, but less retrieved. Trevor Trempy. Powell is fouled. Charging on Powell. Spindler got charging on Powell. And Tulsa holds a 6-2 lead. Here's a look inside. Donald with the follow. Good acting, but just as good position, and that's why the call was made. Donald didn't argue it very much. 1-3-1 one, one set defensively by Bradley with Hawkins at the bottom. Tracy Moore is on the right baseline. He's their leading scorer. On the other baseline there is Moss, who averages nearly 15 a game. Now watch. They'll just keep whipping the ball around, trying to find the open man. They like Moore and Moss to take at least half their shots, more like about 75% of them. Nice play by Trempe. Bradley has it. Three on three. Trevor passed up a shot. Jimmy Les won't. Bradley within two. As Les, who averaging 14, got that down. Bradley doubling on the ball. Trap. One of the things, Frank, when you uh, hold the ball this much, you got to take care of the ball. And Tulsa takes care of the ball better than any other team in the Valley. Moss answered Les's basket. Tulsa by four. Four points for Anthony or David Moss. Look at Tulsa's only lost to Louisville by six. They lost in overtime at Washington, and they were upset by West Texas. They're capable. Bradley's lost only to Clemson in the rainbow. Hawkins goes inside. Williams steps in. He fouls. Williams pinned his man on the baseline, and Hawkins got the ball into him. Tracy Moore, the foul. The early first half is any indication. The Braves think they can take advantage of Mike Williams' size inside, even though Tulsa has got a couple of big guys, and he's had the move so far. Here comes the possibility of Mike Williams' 1,000 point at Bradley. They have, of course, a 1,000 point club, and it's quite an exclusive win when you consider the numbers over the years. <laughs> Except the fact that Hersey Hawkins is probably going to get in it as a sophomore. Williams has another. 15 and a half minutes to play in the opening half, and Bradley has been held to four by Tulsa so far. The free throw shooting has been getting better for Bradley. They were 18 out of 23 the other night against West Texas State. There's Williams, thousand point, and Bradley's trailing eight to five. With timeout, 15.30 to go. We'll be back at Carver Arena in just a moment. The 
price, the service, the satisfaction at S&K Chevrolet. When we say more for less, we mean it. At S&K, we offer free service loaners with new car purchases, so you're never without a car when yours is in for service or repairs at S&K. Get all the details on free service loaners at S&K, your more car for less dollars dealer. S&K Chevrolet, your more for less dealer. Knoxville and Pioneer Parkway, Peoria. See you later, Mark. Yeah. 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 Y
Get all the details on free service loaners at S&K, your more car for less dollars dealer. S&K Chevrolet, your more for less dealer, Knoxville and Pioneer Parkway, Peoria. Television as you've never seen it before. Over 100 channels of satellite TV entertainment is awaiting you at Energy Systems. All over the Tri-County area, you see where Energy Systems has become the dealer with price, selection, and service of Radex satellite dishes. This mesh satellite dish is made by Radex to blend with the environment. And Energy Systems offers a range of Uniden receivers, from the economical Uniden 1000 to the full stereo sound of the Uniden 7000. Energy Systems on Farmington Road, Peoria. Solid Gold, tonight at 12.30 on TV 25. There's the score. A year ago, when Tulsa played Bradley, Tulsa was 4-0 in the Valley, rated 20th in the country, and 13-2 overall. This time, it's Bradley, led by Hersey Hawkins, 17-1 and ranked 19th. Well, we haven't renamed the award for him, and maybe we'll have another player today. The North Point video of Peoria's Bradley player of the game will be named later in the game. North Point will make a donation in the name of that player to Bradley University's General Scholarship Fund. Foul on the Hurricane. It's on Jeff Riley. Inside against Williams. Riley is spelled R-A-H-I-L-L-Y. They're brothers on the team. Jeff's the older. In now. And you have seen the Tulsa bench. Riley, the Riley brothers, are about all that J.D. Barnett uses off the bench. He only has 10 players, or 11 players. Hawkins was open for a second, didn't. And Tulsa covers up. 13.22 to go. Bradley's eight points behind, but it's very early. They're now, now in a zone. There's a skip pass over the zone. It's two out of nine shooting for Bradley. Six out of nine for the Hurricane. Trempy. Oh, a great tip by Williams. Five for Mike Williams, making 1,002, and he found a lane that Tulsa didn't block him out on. Great body control by Big Mike, and he tapped it in. Bradley's within six. Throws up his own. Bradley has stayed with their starting lineup. Nope, this is man-to-man -man for the Braves. Suggs baseline, stripped by left. During that timeout, Dick Versace said, even though you may not agree with the calls, let's not let them dictate the game. You worry about the basketball. For the Hurricane, 43, Brian Riley, 6'11", and Suggs out. So that means Tracy Moore goes to the backcourt. There he is now, off Hawkins. This is a big Hurricane lineup in there now. Both Riley, 6'9", and 6'11". Rudy Keeling's on the other side. You see him standing. He's trying to yell the new assignments with the substitutions. We now have less on Boudreaux. Hawk will take more. Steal by left. Tulsa's got it back. Boudreaux. Riley. That was Jeff Riley for the deuce. 15 to 7. Look at this halftime score. Illinois State 17, West Texas 8. Hawkins missed. Trempe didn't. Trempe on the offensive board. He's Bradley's all-purpose man. He led him in rebounding the other night against West Texas. He got more rebounds and points on the season, I think. Tulsa plays a lot like Dayton. Controlled, good players. Tulsa beat Dayton by three. Bradley by two in overtime. Inside, Les deals again. Out of bounds to the Braves, and Les went after it twice. Fourth turnover on the Golden Hurricane. And Bradley gets pressure. Well, the Tulsa early lead forced the Braves to get into the man-to-man, -man, and it looked a lot scrappier since they got into it. Jim Left, a decade, a ball boy on the bench, and now he's stealing the ball and leading his team down the court. 15-9 Tulsa. Donald Powell is free. Oh, it went. It went out. the goal, the basket counts for Powell. This could be a four-point play. Yeah, Bradley, I think, will get the ball inbounds. The foul, the foul was not on Powell, it was on Hawkins, but not against Percy. As one point in a minute, we see him get shoved underneath. Foul was on Tracy Moore, his second, and the fourth on Tulsa. Two fouls on Tracy Moore. He's the leading scorer at 19 a game. He will take the ball at him. 
Jim Les fires. David Moss picked it off. The Hurricane have a free man on the other end, but first the foul. Smart foul. Jim Les knew he had to foul as there's a real breakdown in the Bradley defense there. Three Hurricane players were all alone on the other end, and as you mentioned, a very wise foul. What else? It was a bucket. Only the second team foul on the Braves, and Bradley stayed with their starting lineup. They're only down four now as Suggs works in the front. Bradley's man-to-man -man has helped them. Steal by Hawkins, right here's the ball. And Ron Spittler and Hersey Hawkins disagree over who hit it last. Hawkins used his brilliant quickness. He's a blur. 11-11 in the first half, Frank Bassoni and Mike Dimmick. Tulsa runs motion offense. Brian Riley hemmed in the baseline. Shot clock at 20. This is David Moss stepping in, threw up a prayer, and a foul on the Braves. Unless his second in a hurry. So now a two-shot foul. So Moss goes to the line. They call him Mossy. This is a very good free throw shooting team. Tulsa averages better than 70% from the line as a team. J.D. Barnett has a very simple philosophy. In practice, if you don't make your free throws, you run. It's kind of uh, simplistic, I guess, but it seems to work. They are the best free throw shooting team in the Valley. Eight points already for Moss, 23. Moore is back in, 35. They get nine for Moss. 17-11, Tulsa. Just under 11 minutes left, first half. Another end, more of a zone press. A little bit similar to what Bradley sticks on teams. Half court, 3-2 variety. With Moore at 6-5 out the top. Jim left another Jim McMahon pass. Jim Les likes nothing more against the zone than to do this. Let the man get behind it and jam it down. Second foul on Jeff Riley. And Mike Williams can have a three-point play. He's already scored seven of Bradley's 13. With his bulk, he can be a force in any game. Bradley is within three and pressuring. What a honey of a defensive game. Moss tries to dunk and a foul on Williams. He blocked a dunk. Oh. That hurt us. And wow. We're, we're about 50 feet away. Moss went at that with all the power you can muster. Just wound up and Williams just stuck it back. I think what they probably did is he did hit the ball and then hit Moss with the body. He swatted the ball and Moss right out of the air. Here's a look. First of all, good job at breaking the press. And here he comes. Wow. Both free throws down. 19-14. Tulsa by five. 11 for Moss. 10, 20 to play in the first half. Look at Les Swirl into the front. Posting up his Powell on one side. He wants the ball. Gone back to a man-to-man. -man. Who throws against Hawkins on the far side? Watch Hawkins operate here. <laughs> Nothing doing for the Hawk. Tulsa comes the other way. Out of bounds, Bradley. The pass intended for Tracy Moore. And the Braves go back on offense. The fifth. Tulsa turnover. That's very unusual for them. They usually take care of the ball a lot better than that, and you're sure to hear J.D. Barnett remind them of that. They cannot make that many turnovers when they play such a set game on offense. Hawkins looks inside the Powell. Both Powell and Williams posting up. Less is free. Too long. He's got it back, and another whistle. It's on Mike Williams. His second. Braves are cold. They came out just red hot against West Texas for the entire night. Better than 70% of the second half. The reserves were hitting everybody else, but 
This kind of reminds me of Tulsa last year when Great we been here. Steve Harris had a big game, and the Braves just couldn't hit, and similar things happening today. Well, Nolan Richardson packed up his polka dot shirts and went to Arkansas, but uh, Tulsa, he left with a load of players, and J.D. Barnett can coach him. And they're a very tough team, but so is Brad. Suggs and Boudreau out front. Moss was fouled by Powell. Donald went for the ball and got it. Not a good, not a good idea foul because Moss was too far out on the court. Six team fouls now, so they will start shooting them, all of them. After this, Moss will go to the line because he was shooting. It's tough to play defense against a team like this. When they swing it around, take care of the ball. You've got to keep your ground. He throws down. Last year, Tulsa won here on January 19th, about exactly a year ago, 69-56. Then Bradley won at Tulsa, 69-64, and Tulsa eliminated Bradley in the Valley Tournament. So two out of three for the Hurricane last year. Moss, seven of eight from the free throw line. Tulsa by seven, the nine-minute mark. Percy Hawkins may have to take the ball to the basket, drive it in. Here's a push off on Fobbs. Well, Paul Caster's really blown a lot of whistles down under that goal. Well, you get a guy out of bed to go to work, I guess. He figures he might as well blow it as much as he can. And Dick Versace accused him of blowing a few already. Bradley has the ball. Trevor Trempe's free in the corner. Oh, he spotted Powell down low, rejected, and a third foul on Fobbs. And that's a problem for the Hurricane because Fobbs is their starting center at 6'10". J.D. Barnett's going to have to go back to the bench. Trippy missed his first shot. Decided not to take very many more after that. Instead went dump down to Powell. Got the ball inside and got the foul. Brian Wiley has come back into the game now for Tulsa. He'll be the center. Number 43. Powell averages 10.7 a game. He's got two, now three. At least six behind. Tulsa started on top and has stayed there. Be interesting to see, Frank, if Dick Versace decides to go to the bench now to try to get a spark from somebody. Jerry Thomas really provided it the other night against West Texas. Had his best game of the season. Good pressure by the Braves. They're five down. Like to get the ball back here. This game has been barbed wire on defense on both ends. Moss. He likes to push off, and Dick Versace is reminding the official that he does that with that elbow. Suggs and Les, they've come after each other before. Brian Riley comes out to the top, and they run their motion game. This is essentially the passing game. 15 on the shot clock. Brian Riley. Not a good shot. Trempe. Kick out to Les. Two on two. The Hawk. Lost it. There's a steal by Jimmy. Hawk tips it ahead to him. Good. Great play by Hawkins and Les. You don't think Mercy Hawkins is learning some of Jim Les' secrets? Les has become a master at that, at just doing anything, punching the ball, lobbing it, and now the Hawks picking some of it up. And now we'll see the crowd pick it up. Listen. Hawk missed. The Braves have it. On the run, Bradley can cut it to one. Hawkins, a sophomore with no discernible weakness, just got one over to Les a moment ago. And now it's Mike Williams inside, lost it. But it's Bradley's ball. With 7.17 to go in a war. Tulsa 21, Bradley 18, and we'll be back in just a minute. At Cohen's, the latest in remote control VCRs, RCA's newest video cassette recorder, now with forehead video system and special effects, plus all the most wanted features, 14-day four-event programmer, all-digital display, multi-band electronic tuner, plus RCA's infrared wireless remote control. That's right, RCA's latest VCR with forehead video system and infrared remote control, now at Cohen's, now just $4.49. Cohen's for the latest from RCA. 
My interest in Shear Buick is easy as no secret. We're time-tested and customer-approved. In fact, the General Motors Buick division has consistently rated Shear high in customer satisfaction within our Chicago zone. Well, now we've moved into a nationwide group of 188 dealers. And you know what? We still rank among the top three. No doubt we're your number one Buick dealer in central Illinois. The numbers prove it. Count on Shear. Dance Fever, today at 5 on TV 25. Seven seventeen to go, first half, and here it is, the Lesson Hawk combination. Just a little bat by the Hawk, and there's Jimmy on the other end. They keep working better and better together. Percy Hawkins, in his last five games, has averaged 24.4 points a game. So far today, none. Zero. Hawk has not scored a point. Actually, they haven't looked for him that much, but we've got to credit the guards. Byron Boudreaux, in particular, has been doing a good job. As you look at J.D. Barnett, first year at Tulsa. Now it's zone. And Bradley can cut it to one here. Jerry Thomas in, Mike Williams out. Mike with two fouls. Hawkins in the corner. Zips the ball to Powell, who had it slapped out of his hand. Now with this kind of zone, you heard us talk about a skip pass, where they swing the ball from one side to the other, just go right over the lane with it. That's something they like to do against these zones. Kempe comes out top. Thomas is down low. Hawkins has stayed pretty much on that right wing offensively. We're under seven minutes now, and Bradley's behind, 21 to 18. Trempy fires. The Braves are within one. And all the points for Bradley, 20 of them, none for Hawkins. Good sign for the Braves. Because you know, Tulsa can't shut him out. Jerry Thomas, number 21, now into the game for Bradley. Bradley stays zone. Moss is on the left side. He's had seven of eight foul shooting and a rejection by Donald Powell. We mentioned he's pumped up. He's from right outside Tulsa. And he and Tracy Moore were seniors the same year. Tulsa said Moore was the best prospect in the state. Bradley might argue with that, and so might Donald before these careers are over. 6-10 in the first half. Tulsa protects a one-point lead. Myron Boudreaux is the point guard, running the show on top. And here's Suggs. Very patient. Tracy Moore. Missed. And there's the Hawk. The miracle worker of the past week has slipped the rebound off the board. And Bradley shoots for the lead. Now Tulsa's back man-to-man. -man. Didn't expect them to switch as much as they have been on defense in this first half. This will probably go to the final dizzy seconds, just like the last several Bradley games have. Percy. Rhythm jumper, you could just feel that was going. Bradley's got the lead at 5.22 on the first deuce. Tulsa now needs a momentum basket of their own. Boudreaux fires. Byron Boudreaux answered. Tulsa's got the lead back. Boudreaux only 42.7 from the field this year. He wasn't very good last year, but he used to throw up some bad shots. In this system, you can bet he doesn't throw up any. He's a good athlete. They call him Slinky. Less. Yes. Half a dozen for Jimmy. And Bradley, 24 to 23. Well, we may warm up this place yet, and that's difficult to do, believe me. 4.38 in the first half. Right here, Dick Versace yelling down here to the white. Jerry Thomas playing with a t-shirt under his white Bradley home uniform. Who is 21. Tracy Moore is blocked by Hawkins. Must had a, he's got a propeller. Inside, Powell. Woo. Powell suspended in the air and was fouled. Once again, we saw some good defense by Tulsa inside. Donald kind of double cranked at that time. When he knew his shot wasn't going to go in, he hung and got the foul. It's on Suggs. Suggs is first. 
-hmm. and Powell shoots a pair. Two out of two there. Powell 6'8", 202 pounds this year. Here's another look at that one. Inside, turned around, didn't have it, going up against Moss, but he managed to hang long enough and get the foul. Everyone on this team's hanging anymore. They're all taking cues from Mercy Hawkins. And he never parachutes for 26 now to Bradley, 23, a three-point advantage. J.D. Barnett is concerned. He's from Chillicothe, Missouri, out of ECU last. Now here's that 1-3-1 one, one zone. The Braves also changing on defense and another block. Foul on Powell against Brian Riley, 43. Powell's third, which will get Greg Jones off the bench. That's why Mike Williams has been out. And Jones forgot to take his shirt off. Ron Spittler reminded him to take the red warm-up off. And there's Jones, 6'5", sophomore from Robeson, as Powell sits. That's well, three fouls on Donald, but also Dick is not going to like those kind of fouls. That's at least twice in this game where they have blown at a guy about 15 feet away and got a foul. And now Trevor Trempe is the tallest brave at 6'7". So this is a short Bradley lineup as Brian Riley pulls Tulsa within two. Within one. Tulsa shoots 74% from the free throw line, and that has helped them. There's timeout on the court. 3.53 to go in the first half, and we'll come back in a moment. You see that? It's a Coors beer truck. What's interesting is that Coors trucks are refrigerated. That's because heat hurts the taste of beer, any beer. So that's why Coors ships their beer cold, keeps it cold till it gets to your store. And why does Coors and only Coors go to all that expense and trouble? Simple. So you get a better beer. And you want a beer that's a little less heavy. Never bitter, but with all the spirit of a great beer. Coors is the one. There's a winter wonderland of savings now during Cohen's January clearance. You'll save 10, 20, 30, 40 percent and more on selected items from every department at Cohen's. Furniture, carpeting, TVs, appliances, bedding and accessories. Now is the time to buy and there's no interest and no payments till April with approved credit. Savings to 40 percent and more plus no interest and no payments till April during Cohen's January clearance sale. What you need for your home is on sale now at Cohen's. At the movies tonight at 6:30 on TV 25. Well, this is the best basketball game here, but boy, there's good basketball being played all over today. Be sure to join Mark Strauss tonight at 6 and 10 for scores and highlights from all over the valley. We'll have highlights from that ISU game. Apparently, not many of them since it's 17-8. Also, the latest news from Kelly Morgan and Gary Moore and Kathy Wyman's weather. Tune to the team that Central Illinois depends on tonight. 3.53 to go in the first half at Carver Arena. Bradley trying to win its 18th game of the year. Leads by one. Has the ball with Hawkins and Les in the backcourt. Trempe, Thomas, and Jones up front. Powell with three fouls. Williams with two out. Now again, we'll see Tulsa in a zone. Change it up and also like the Braves, they like to get way out on the court. Especially against the Hawks. Hawkins got his first two a moment ago. Les finds Jerry Thomas inside. He takes a running hook. Also sees the court well. That's Byron Boudreau. He has good hands. Now another change. They got Trippy in that high spot instead of down low. 3-2 zone. Trippy, the tallest brave on the court, is playing up top. <laughs> also trying for the lead. They run the shot clock down to 20. Probably will run it down to 10 or more. Three minutes left, first half. Tulsa jumped out to the lead. Now the shot clock's at 10, and they know it. Riley right through his leg. Left with his nose to the rim, gives to Trempe. Wheels the pass inside. Hawkins, two. We should get for Hawk. We should get one of those lawn jeans clocks that they use at the Olympics and start timing the hang time. He has one of those space packs on his back. You can't see. 
Bradley by three. That one's going the wrong way. He went over to say to J.D. Barnett, what do you want? J.D. said, how about a hoop? Yeah, how about the lead? <laughs> Which is what we had before. Graves up by three at one time. Tulsa led by eight in this one. Bradley has made a tough, good comeback. And they've done it with Mike Williams missing on playing very few minutes here after a great beginning for Big Mike. Two minutes, Two minutes first half. Steal by the Braves. Less in the middle. Mercy Hawkins! Count it. Parking. on the fly. Boudreau got back for position, apparently maintained his position, but they'll give the basket to Bradley. First foul on Hawkins. It'll be one and one the other end for Tulsa. Fans just found out about the call. You know, Frank, it's been amazing since the Wichita game when the Hawk picked up five offensive fouls. Everybody in the valley is literally falling at his feet. Whenever they see him coming, they are trying to lure him into those fouls. Dick just asked Tom Massimino, is that two or one on the Hawk? Is it one? Look, look better. 25 is where Tulsa sits. They've been on it a while. Boudreaux changed that with his fifth point. Bradley 30, Tulsa 26, a minute 52 in the first half. Braves have a number of people with a couple personals too. Illinois boy in the game now and for Tulsa. Number 24, Daryl Decker, who's from Ottawa. I'm sure we've got some people up there watching today. Sophomore. 11 of 12 for the Hurricane at the foul line in the first half. And they're down three. Jim Les fires. Nice long rebound to Greg Jones. Les comes back. Too hard. Ball's loose. Les got it loose, and Hawkins got it. Oh, nice play by the Braves. Now well, they get a new 45 and see what they do with it. Hawk Hawkins is held as he goes, went to the goal again. Fouls on Boudreaux. Thought they're going to hold it up there for a minute, but Hawk just went rampaging into the lane and got a foul out of it. Seemed like just a few moments ago we were saying he has no points, and now he threw for seven and eight. This will be his first foul shots of the game. The big rebound was David Moss, who's the first half leading scorer with 13. Tempe still out front. Bradley still zone. Hawkins his second foul. That's what you call a touch foul. Trying to avoid the contact. <laughs> Not what you call a real smart foul. Hawks says, I don't want to hear about it. I know. When a player is as valuable as Hawkins, you want him to use all the five fouls. If you get him on the offensive fouls and things like that, you can understand, but you hate for him to waste one like that. Tracy Moore, who's a 78% foul shooter, hits it. He's had 20 or more points eight times already this year, so he's a capable scorer. He got them both. It's a one-point game, 110 to play, first half. Tulsa's been 13 of 14 at the free throw line. Yeah, the good free throw shooting really does make a difference. Huck broke one way, Les is past the other, and Bradley's fifth turnover allows Tulsa to try to get the lead back. Tulsa with nine turnovers, Bradley with but five. Bradley's played a clean half. J.D. Barnett's got a field fortunate that his team, which averages 13 turnovers, has made nine in the first half, and they're shooting for the lead right now. Just under a minute to play in this first half. Big house at Carver Arena. Enthusiastic one, too. Tulsa's 13 and three, Bradley 17 and one. Shot clock at 25. Game clock, 39. Udo quarterbacking this team. Bradley comes out farther with their defense. Half a minute in the game, 13 seconds on the shot clock. Riley throws it up. Jeff Riley and a foul on Riley, a bad shot. And he banged Greg Jones trying to get the rebound. His third foul. 
They call him Moose as a nickname, and he looked like it on that one. J.D. Barnett's having what looks to be a calm word with him. Well, there's a good reason to call these guys Moose. The only things I can really remember the Rileys for before this year is being in fights everywhere. Uh, one of them, and I, I want to say it's Jeff, but I think it was him, was in a fight with Lou Stefanovich down at Illinois State a couple of years ago. One of them had words with, her, uh, with Boise Winters here a couple of years ago that consequently they were always on the basketball disabled list because they were in all those fights, but they have been big contributors this year. Greg Jones. 54% on the season from the line, missed that. But Hersey Hawkins saved the rebound, and Bradley's lead is 30 to 29. 20 seconds, no shot clock now. Bradley may take one. Tulsa plays their man to man. They play it tough. Are they switch? Hurt Suggs now on Hawkins. Less fires a hold with six seconds. Tulsa's got time for a shot. Two, one, it won't count. No at the end of the first 20 minutes. Bradley 32, Tulsa 29. A million bucks in the lottery probably move directly to the ocean. Mountains. We've always wanted to live near the water. Mountains. Gonna be at the Silver Bullet tonight. So now it's third down. Coach wants me to call a quarterback draw. Two course lights, Bob. So before I can do anything, I get blindsided by this lineman named Everett. We call him the Mount. Mount Everett. <laughs> this guy was so bad, he knocked me straight into Barkin. Yeah, well, he could never be the Barkin that you are, Rob. That's true. But he could be the Barkin. There's no slowing down with the Silver Bullet tonight. Coors Light here. John Beers Ford Subaru and McDonald's welcome the Chicago Bears. The Good News Bears featuring your favorite players take to the basketball court against the Peoria All-Stars Friday, February 14th, 8 p.m. at Robertson Fieldhouse. Tickets available at the Fieldhouse and Civic Center box office. Plus special limited offer. Meet the Bears. Enjoy pre-game cocktails and the post-game party at the Bear Marquette. Bear Bash tickets include game admission, pre- and post-game parties, and more. Tickets are limited. Get yours now. The Bears versus the Peoria All-Stars Friday the 14th. Don't miss it. FTV, tonight at midnight on TV 25. This 25 Sports exclusive is brought to you in part by Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. By Coors Light, the silver bullet. There's no slowing down with the silver bullet. By Cohen's, downstate Illinois' largest home furnisher. By S&K Chevrolet, the Chevy dealer that offers you free service loaners and by North Point Video in Peoria and Plaza Video in Morton. You've probably heard that Coors isn't pasteurized. Well, it's true. It's also true that Coors is the only major brewer who won't pasteurize any of their beer. The reason? Taste. See, when you pasteurize something, you heat it. And heating hurts the taste of beer. So Coors purifies without heat. That helps make Coors a little less heavy, never bitter, but with all the spirit of a great beer. So when you want a beer, it's just plain better. Coors is the one. When you pay your phone bill, ever wonder where your money is really going? Chances are, off to a big corporation far away. But with Teleconnect, you know exactly where that money's going. It's staying right here in the Midwest. Teleconnect dollars go toward new jobs, new services, and research. Things that improve the business climate where you live. So you decide where your money goes. Out there or here? Keeping your bucks at home. Another reason Teleconnect is always your best connection. Watch your favorite stars perform their biggest hits. Solid Gold, tonight at 12.30 on TV 25. Halftime, Bradley and Tulsa with the Braves in a three-point lead. Bradley's... University is about to honor their 1953-54 basketball team, Mike Vinick, who finished second in the NCAA. And, and I know that there's uh, an awful lot of people around the program now that hope that this unit, uh, Bradley Braves, will have an NCAA appearance of their own, and that looks likely. I think some people are just beginning to realize that when we hear about the Braves' great start, just how good some of the other Bradley teams 
really have been when you think 17 and one is only the I think the fourth best start that they've had in school history. There have been some marvelous teams, and this certainly is one. They did a good job today. They started uh, cold from the field. Tulsa they did. got off to an eight-point lead, and then uh, I thought the defense created some turnovers. Tulsa's really staying in it on the foul line. Bradley was two out of their first nine from the field, and Hawkins had no points in the early going. David Moss with 13 leads at the uh, halftime, but I thought Jim West had a, one of his better uh, halves, and of course Mike Williams was a force early and then got fouls, and, and Dick protected him on the bench, but Bradley's use was balanced. A couple of guys with eight, a couple with six. One factor, uh, Tulsa, Tracy Moore, who averages 19 points a game, wasn't much of a factor of scoring. He only had four points. He's averaging almost 20 a game. This is something you should probably look for in the second half. Hawkins or Moore get hot, and they start looking for him. In a game that's only right now 32-29, they could really be the factor. So we'll watch for them in the second half. They really can, and I'll tell you, another key is David Moss. Moss with 13 points in the first half has to, has to be contained better by Bradley. We're going to come back with a halftime interview and some more activities at Bradley and Tulsa in just a moment. Long before the women's movement, Long before women were receiving their rightful place in leadership circles, even long before women were allowed to vote, a Peoria woman was literally rebuilding her city at the turn of the century. Lydia Moss Bradley donated the site of St. Francis Medical Center, relieved the Bradley Memorial Church of a sizable mortgage, built the Bradley Home for Aged Women, and gave Laura Bradley Park to the city of Peoria. Then, in 1897, Lydia Moss Bradley founded a Polytechnic Institute that has become a major comprehensive private university which has graduated many outstanding women. Dr. Joan Scott Wallace, class of 1952, became the highest ranking woman and minority in the Department of Agriculture when President Carter appointed her assistant secretary of that cabinet department. Today, Dr. Wallace is the administrative officer of international cooperation and development for the USDA. The feeling of independence and the feeling, yes, you can and you can do it if you try, was reinforced over the number of Bradley Bradley's 1983 Outstanding Young Graduate Award was presented to Dr. Lillian Glass, a 1974 Bradley graduate. Dr. Glass, a clinical instructor in pediatrics at the University of Southern California School of Medicine and noted author in the field of speech pathology, has appeared on several syndicated talk shows. My next guest is a prominent Beverly Hills speech pathologist whose practice includes not just uh, actors like Dustin Hoffman and Tootsie, but uh, also teenagers who are eager to learn to talk effectively. Her new book is called How Do You Deprogram Your Valley Girl? <laughs> Bradley University continues to prepare young women to lead useful and productive lives in all fields of endeavor. Over 43% of the students enrolled in the College of Business Administration are women. 50% of the majors in the College of Communication and Fine Arts are women, and the number of women in the College of Engineering and Technology has increased from 28 in 1974 to 110 in 1984. Diane Park Potter, a 1976 graduate of Bradley's Engineering College, was its first recipient of the Outstanding Industrial Engineering Graduate Award given by the American Institute of Industrial Engineers. Today, she's a production coordinator for Eastman Kodak Company in Rochester, New York. The impact that today's Bradley women will have on the future has yet to be determined, but if they possess the foresight and determination of Bradley's founder, their potential for success is unlimited. Put it out before it puts you out. Smoking and carelessness don't mix. A fire safety message from the National Fire Information Council. You can't just take them. They're all somebody's sons, mister. And they're all willing to shake their blood fighting tyranny. Ask your boy. Who's more? All right, you can't see No. Now, come, let's move on here. Al Pacino stars in Revolution about America's War of Independence. Revolution is one of four new movies we'll be reviewing this week at At The Movies, the movie review program. Let's all be there tonight. Start your evening off right by watching Live at Five. Next week, a look at U.S. interests in the Philippines and how upcoming elections may change that. On the medical beat, we'll see how children scarred by fire adjust to the trauma psychologically. If you need therapy but are too busy to bother, it could be as close as your telephone. We'll have a consumer report on setting up a trust to help guarantee financial security for your kids and becoming a singing star for $9.95. We'll tell you how on Live at Five next week. Solid Gold, tonight at 12.30 on TV 25.
Bradley is ahead of Tulsa at halftime, 32 to 29, thanks largely to the Braves shooting 13 of 27 from the field, 48%. They were outdone at the foul line by the Golden Hurricane, who were an amazing 13 out of 14 from the free throw line. Bradley won the rebounding battle in the first half, 14 to 11. Let's check the fouls just quickly as we're looking down the official stats as they have come over. Anthony Fobbs and Jeff Riley with three apiece for the Golden Hurricane. Bradley has only one player with three, Powell, but Mike Williams, Jim Les, and Hersey Hawkins with the two seniors and the sophomore star with three fouls apiece. Now we're ready to go down to the court and Mike Dimmick. Thank you very much, Frank. There's been some news off the court this week. We're with uh, Dr. Ron Kapersky, the NCAA representative for Bradley. You were down in New Orleans. I guess the main news was about the drug testing, but something people were interested about was the academic requirements, the old Proposition 48, which is now a different number, but nothing has really still come of it. it turned out to be number 16, Mike, and the convention had a couple of controversial issues, and the academic one was one of them. And what we passed was that there is going to be a uh, a new requirement now where a student athlete in high school will have to have a a, um, a certain grade point in designated core courses rather than just overall and so there's a sliding scale that's going to if you have a higher grade point then you then you could have a lower SAT or SAT or, or ACT score and it's going to slide in and in a two-year period so that at the end of two years it'll be a, uh, a two-point on a four-point scale in 11 designated core courses and either a 15 on the ACT or a 700 on the SAT. Now that's for initial eligibility, so that's for high school athletes coming in uh, beginning in August of 86. Now very quickly, there is growing concern about boosters involvement in academic recruit or in athletic recruiting. Was anything really done on that? Well, the, the proposal that, uh, that would have had major impact was sponsored by the Southwest Conference and that was referred back to council for further study. And what it said was that uh, uh, boosters or people interested in helping out the university could not visit with students uh, that are being recruited off campus. And that would have been a major thing because now you can visit with them off campus. But that's been referred back to committee and it'll probably come up again at next year's convention. All right, we're starting to hear a whole lot more about all of this. We thank Dr. Ron Kapersky and now we give it back to Frank. Thank you, Mike, and Dr. Ron. We're at halftime, and there's a busy sports day, and here with an update is Lee Hall. Thanks, Frank. Again, the Braves leading Tulsa 32-29 to at the half. We could have an I-74 showdown for the Missouri Valley lead this Thursday. Illinois State looks like they will move to 4-1 and one in the Valley. If both ISU and Bradley win today, Thursday's matchup would be for first. You'll see it right here on TV 25. Two other Valley games, SIU and Creighton tonight. Wichita State losing on the road. Indiana State wins by 13. The Shockers troubles at home don't get any better on the road. Maybe Gene Smithson should snap his players with that towel. John Sherman Williams cracked the whip for Indiana State. The Sycamores go around the horn. Williams sticks it from the corner. He leads all scores with 18. Senior Jeff McComb goes high for the follow here. Wichita drops their fourth in a row in the Valley. The guys atop the Valley trying to push other teams farther down. Tulsa muscle on its way up to Bradley's level, though. Tracy Moore gives the Hurricane a 6-0 lead early in the first half. Big Mike Williams gets the Braves within three. A pretty alley-oop jam from Jimmy Less. Bradley takes its first lead here on Hersey Hawkins' first bucket. An 18-footer gives the Braves a 22-21 lead. They go up by five on an acrobatic layup by the Hawk. Give him the bucket, give him the charge, and give Bradley a four-point lead over Tulsa at the half. They are trying to go 5-0 in the Valley. In the Big Ten, Michigan leads early on in the first half, and Boston College knocks off Ohio State. Illinois gets a chance to even their Big Ten record tonight. The 2-3 and three Illini host Northwestern. A battle for the ACC lead and number one in the nation out east as we go to the highlights. Duke takes a six-point first half lead on the Johnny Dawkins steal and slam. North Carolina comes back and takes a five-point lead into the locker room. A nice follow here by Kevin Madden. And North Carolina still number one. Moving on to other top 20 action. Louisville leads by 17 in the first half over number four Syracuse, an upset in the making. In the Big 8, Oklahoma leads early on. Also in the Big 8, Kansas, a 23-point winner over Oklahoma State. Don't have the score there for UNLV leads Fullerton State 15-11 in the first half. Kentucky, a 17-point winner. UCLA uh, drops one to Notre Dame by 10. Georgetown over Seton Hall by 10. And in two overtime, Cincinnati knocks off Virginia Tech. Rivermen get back on the ice. They play at Milwaukee tonight. 
Mark Strauss has the latest in sports coming up for you at 6. Kelly tells us what's up in news now. Thanks, Lee. Coming up tonight in News 25 at 6 o'clock, we'll have details of an early morning fire in downtown Peoria above Kaufman's Furniture Store. Area labor leaders learn some new techniques for improving labor management relations. A Chicago priest tells Bloomington residents about the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. Some Peoria High School students learn about city government. Fraser Ingerman will report on their mock city council session. We'll begin a special weekend series on medical quackery. We'll update some local fire investigations, as well as State Representative Fred Turk's condition. Join Gary Moore, Mark Strauss, Kathy Wyman, and me at 6 o'clock for those stories and more. We'll return to the Peoria Civic Center for the second half right after these messages. New from Chaz Crispy Chicken on Sterling Avenue, a buffet like you've never seen before. Not only Chaz's famous crispy chicken is on the buffet, but pizza piled with cheese and extras. Crunchy fish sticks, oriental chow mein and steamy rice, crisp onion rings, spaghetti and rich meat sauce, cheese nachos, over 50 items including salad bar and vegetables, and Chaz's own cinnamon fritters and buttermilk biscuits. Chaz Crispy Chicken and Chaz's new buffet, only at the Sterling Avenue location. The Town & Country Real Estate Agency tells us that if it weren't for their ad in the GTE Yellow Pages, they wouldn't have about 50% of their business. So like Town & Country, why don't you use good business sense and take a big visible ad in the GTE Yellow Pages and watch your business grow. From Breakdance, the ballroom, the hottest dance contest of all is on TV 25. Catch the fever. Join me and a host of celebrity judges for Dance Fever today at 5 on TV 25. About ready to start the second half of Bradley and Tulsa. 9,266 fans on hand as the Braves lead by three. And Mike Dimmick, the official stat sheet shows Jim Les had that good half with six assists and eight points. But Hersey Hawkins had but six points, and uh, you can watch for the Hawk to explode in a second. It'll be definitely the matchup to watch. They're not necessarily guarding each other, but Hersey Hawkins and Tracy Moore, when they do well, their teams do well. Moore has been in double figures every single game. You're looking at him there, number 35. He only has four. Bradley has shut him down well in the zone defense. At halftime, as we mentioned, that 53-54 Bradley team was honored. Some local names from that squad include, of course, Dean Ed King of Bradley, Don Matthews, Lee O'Connell, Bob Carney. They're all here today and delighted to have them in the Hall of Fame. Now, the second half. Bradley with a three-point lead starts man-to-man. -man. Tulsa's 3-1 and one in the Valley. Bradley 4-0. This game would be a big one for Tulsa because they'd have a victory on the Braves' home court and Bradley has to return a visit there. Moss, first half's leading scorer, picks up. He's got his 15th point. He really scored a bunch of them, especially in the free throw line early in the first half. Well, they also did a pretty good job of shutting him down. Powell with three fouls goes baseline. Here's Tulsa also in a man-to-man -man to start it out. Bradley sets and Mike Williams on the post. Ooh, they wanted Hawkins down the middle. Tulsa's got it. They could take the lead. Les just dove and took it away from Suggs from behind. What effort. You can't play any harder than that. Can't hit the floor any harder either, but that, that has never been a factor in Jim Les's play. Ooh, he swiped at that ball. Bradley now sets zone. They cover up the middle well, and they tried to go to Fobbs inside. In right, this game, you can almost have a contest. Pick the defense every time they come down. It's been different almost every time. It's been intense every time. Tulsa shot 14 free throws in the first half and only 17 times from the field. So you can tell they're patient. Tracy Moore misses his first shot of the second half, and Bradley rebounds. So Moore is now one for seven. But Tulsa has the ball back, three on two. Moss got another one, and Tulsa takes the lead. And they're riding David Moss. Turnover has hurt Tulsa in the first half. This time they take advantage and take an early lead, 18-22 to go. 
Williams finds Hawkins, steps in, missed. Tulsa rebounds. The Hawk tried to jam one inside and heavy going, but couldn't get it down. Bradley needs a stop on the defensive end. They blazed through a great road trip and now face Tulsa and the Hurricane hit three in a row to come out the second half. Bradley's down three after leading by three. That was Moss once again, and Victor Sace is going to go to the bench to try to stop him. Jerry Thomas will come into the game at the next whistle. 19 points for David Moss. He's the player of the game so far. Hawkins' stutter steps is stripped. But got it back. And was fouled by Fobbs, his fourth. J.D. Barnett's bench, as we mentioned, is not very deep, and that's going to probably put Bobs on it. He's going to have to bring in number 43, Brian Riley. Well, Bradley Powell went out when Thomas came in, and Bobs will go out 40 with 43, Brian Riley, 6'11", junior, 220. The younger brother of Jeff coming on. Jim Roseboro, former Iowa assistant, over on the bench with J.D. Barnett. As so is Tony Branch, who played on the NCAA championship team with Louisville in 1980. Hawkins rolled it home. He has an 81% mark there. He's averaging 20.3, and that was his seventh. Remember the Loyola game? I think he had no points with three minutes to go in the first half. He ended up with his career high of 27. 17.30 to play. Tulsa with a one-point lead. Here's the Bradley zone again. This time it's the 1-3-1 with Jimmy on top. Hawk at the tail. Bradley didn't take its first lead in the first half till 5.27 left in the half on a Hawkins shot. They're down now early in the second half. David Moss again. Tempe picked it off. Boy, Suggs is like a second uniform and a foul on Tempe. Rocky. And Tempe can't believe it. Dick Mercedes is very unhappy with Ron Spittler today. The call was that Tempe put his elbow in there. initiated the contact, about 9,000 people would have cared to differ. That may serve to pump up the Bradley team in the crowd. Tulsa up by one. Boy, Suggs is like a second jersey to Les today. He's been everywhere Jimmy has been. Moss again, good again. 21 points for David Moss, the junior from San Antonio, is on fire. And a foul on Suggs. Way in the backcourt, Suggs fouled less, 90 feet from the basket. It's a second personal on Suggs. Also second team foul on Tulsa, so nobody's in any, any trouble yet. Last year when Suggs wasn't even a starter, he started at, at Tulsa just to guard Jim Left. Another foul on Suggs. He's got two in 10 seconds. In five seconds, that's his third. Now it's his turn to complain. And that's going to have to change the way J.D. Barnett uses his lineup. Here it is, the second one. Just a quick burst, and Suggs couldn't keep up with him. Suggs is now going to have to go in, and we continue to have the life of Riley's come in. This time it's Jeff Riley, so we have a Riley, Riley, Moss, Boudreaux, and Moore lineup. <laughs> Riley, Riley, Moss, and Pepin. <laughs> and Loth. Tulsa by three, Hawkins tries. Moss has been playing like his name's cut up on the building in grave somewhere. Riley's free, missed it. Oh, Hawkins was up above the rim for that. Bradley tries to cut it to one. Jim Lust will shoot. Yes. Oh. Ball out of bounds to the Braves, last touch by Riley. Under 16 minutes to go. And time has been called with the score. Tulsa 37 and Bradley 34 will be back right after this.
It used to be that North Point Video had the largest selection of name brand TVs and video equipment. It used to be that North Point Video had thousands of video movies to choose from. And it used to be that North Point was a little cramped for space. So now North Point is growing, moving to an expanded location in North Point Plaza. In addition to video, we'll carry a full line of appliances. Names like Amana, Maytag, Whirlpool, and Tappan. North Point Video, we're not what we used to be. We're better. The price, the service, the satisfaction at SK Chevrolet. When we say more for less, we mean it. At SK, we offer free service loaners with new car purchases, so you're never without a car when yours is in for service or repairs at SK. Get all the details on free service loaners at SK, your more car for less dollars dealer. SK Chevrolet, your more for less dealer, Knoxville and Pioneer Parkway, Peoria. At the movies, tonight at 6.30 on TV 25. Just a reminder that the Bradley bus leaves Maldotti's Pizzeria for Carvo Arena every home game day. You can beat the traffic, plus enjoy Bradley memorabilia, free beverages along the way. It's all brought to you by TV 25, Maldotti's, Coors Beer, and GP Transit. Call 682-0463 for tickets. Speaking of tickets, there aren't many left for Thursday night. Bradley and Illinois State here, and we'll be here to televise at 8 o'clock. Hope we have more points than they've got down there. 37-34 Tulsa because they've shot four out of five in this half. Bradley's 0 for 3, waiting for somebody to get on track. Tulsa's going to make him shoot over his own now. Trempe decides to. That's 0 for 4. Who's got the ball? Jump ball is the call. Possession, Bradley. So the Braves, with Powell out, have Thomas in. Bradley hasn't gone deep into their bench today. Anthony Manuel, who had a very good game against West Texas with 10 points and four steals, hasn't been in. J.D. Barnett knows a lot about Manuel. He said he tried to recruit him when he was at Virginia Commonwealth, and it was down during the early signing period of Virginia Commonwealth and Texas El Paso. Couldn't wait, so he ends up at Bradley. Coaches need different players in different situations, and here's Jim Less, and Bradley needs a hoop. Not this time. Hill haven't made one in five minutes. 0 for 5. Coors Beer, Coors Light, Cohen's, SK Chevrolet, and North Point Video and Peoria Plaza Video, and Morton. Hope you're enjoying this battle. Bradley comes out. There's the whistle as the Braves had the big advantage in a foul on Tulsa. Brian Riley, 43 fouled, and Bradley was three on one the other way. 15, 16 to play in the game, and the scoreboard seems frozen, 37-34, Tulsa. Four team fouls now on Tulsa, but that's the first on B, Riley. Hawkins goes in the corner. Bradley's got a low baseline four. Now Trempe pops out. They throw over the zone. Mike mentioned that skip pass a little while ago. Hawkins passes up a shot. Mike Williams inside, turns and scores! Ten points for Mike Williams. Braves just kind of formed a neat little triangle there. That was a finger roll by a 255-pound guy. Here's Tracy Moore, and he's cold, and Jerry Thomas spears it. Boy, the Braves are really gaining a break there. He can't hit a thing. Hawkins couldn't handle the pass from Les. He wheeled it with one hand. And Tulsa has the turnover. 14-22 in the game. It's a one-point Tulsa lead. Now Bradley down by one will go to a man-to-man. Bradley's turned the ball over four times and a half, and there's Tulsa's first in this half. And Bradley will shoot for the lead as Herb Suggs, 12, with three fouls, comes back. Moore is going to sit down. I believe he is now one for eight from the field, which is unbelievable for the guy who shoots 50% from the field. He had 20 against Southern Illinois just a couple days ago. Trempe's open. 14 minutes left. Hawkins exchanges. It's a triangle with Williams in the middle. Big Mike again. And gone! It doesn't count. And the foul is on Tulsa. Fiddler's got a foul on Jeff Riley, 33. That's four fouls on Jeff Riley. 
the Riley brothers are piling up the fouls too. Well, as we mentioned, after the Riley brothers, there's not much to be had on that bench. Five team fouls now on Tulsa, so Bradley could be going to the line soon. 13.55, still to go. Braves going for the lead. One down on the ball, and we've been here before. Hawkins loaded up, but didn't. Bradley handles it nicely. Jerry Thomas takes it up. It'll go. Hawkins, the assist, and Thomas, the deuce. will go to the bench with five. Hawk with a great quick pass. Now watch Thomas. He's really been looking good on this baseline the last two games. Another will drop for him, and he'll go to the line. And believe it or not, Jerry Thomas has been looking very good at the line. We must have missed something. The fans are not too happy about Jeff Riley. Yeah, Jeff Riley uh, and J.D. Barnett were having a few words with Ron Spittler, and the crowd got involved a little bit. J.D. Barnett's taking his time to find Anthony Fobbs back to bring in and there's your team foul situation Fobbs comes in he's got four he's their starting center he hasn't delivered yet on the promise that they think is there Jerry Thomas you have to give him a lot of credit he started the season on a really sour note shooting wise but he's bounced back. Watch the way he's shooting these. It looks like he's holding the ball a little, little bit different. They're certainly going down. A three-point play for Thomas puts Bradley up by two, and the Braves pressure. Hawkins all over Boudreaux. Look at the quickness of these athletes. Riley. Yes. Brian Riley along the baseline, only about a six-footer. He's got six points, and it's a tie at 13-20. So what else is new? Mike Williams posts up. There's four fouls on Fobbs, remember. I think Bradley remembers. They're looking for Big Mike. What does he want the ball? He's got it. He turns, put it up in the crap. He couldn't get it. And wait a second, we got a jump ball, but it almost appeared that two Tulsa guys Mike Williams appears that uh, he hurt himself. You can see him on the left side of your screen lying on his back holding his head like he might have hit his head or he has some kind of a headache or maybe his eyes. He turned into two Tulsa players when he put the ball up short and jammed it up against the rim. I think he's all right. On that sequence, Bob seemed very aware of his fouls. After Williams put it up, Bob didn't even bother to turn around and look for the basket. I think he's also aware that they've already lost Jeff Riley and as you have indicated, they don't go very deep into that bench but they're not going to play with four. They do have a seven-footer, David Otto, who is from Elmhurst, Illinois, but he has been pretty much invisible on the season. J.D. does not have much confidence in him. Deckard would probably be the guy. The first time we've had a tie since nothing, and Hawkins steals the ball. Mike Williams stumbled, fell down, and was tripped and fouled. I think they got Ponce. Bobs is gone, and six foot ten, Bobs is out. Six foot nine, Jeff Riley is out, and Tulsa's lost the pair. Mike Williams is holding his head once again. He's been mopping the floor with his uniform on the last two times down, and he's saying this is a heck of a way to get a couple of fouls. The biggest difference in Mike Williams this year. Is a, is a few pounds and a lot of consistency. Here he comes. Here's a look. Seemed to trip over Fob's foot, which I'm sure is what Anthony was saying. And he tripped over my foot. I didn't trip him. Well, I'll tell you, I said Tulsa wouldn't play with four, but <laughs> that's all they have out there now. <laughs> Mike Williams, wait. This is definitely a lack of confidence in your bench <laughs> when, when you are four on the floor and you don't send anybody in. Well, you got your leading scorer over there, and he's going to come back. Leading scorer on the season, not in the game. Tracy Moore has not found Carver Arena to his liking. One out of eight in the game, but he averages 19 points a game. So he he's might, in. He might be a factor yet. 12.39 to go. Now Mike's ready. The consistency he has gained is like putting a, a scope on a shotgun. You can just expect better results. 
<laughs> he just straddled and stepped over Sugg. Oh boy, let's send that one to the networks too. That's just about as good. Baseline, Tracy Moore came off the bench and got his first deuce. And Tulsa leads by two. Six for Moore. Look at an 8-5. <laughs> the gymnastics move. That's just unbelievable. Less and Suggs. Watch this battle. Nice screen by Thomas. Somebody's open. Hawkins, wing left. Hawkins eyes the game. Credit Jim Les with a good penetration, and that's now double figures for the Hawk 10. 11.52 to play. Boy, they, they warmed it up down at Horton. It's 42-32. Illinois State over West Texas, that is a final. 42-32, that's four and one for Illinois State in the league. David Moss, in and out. Mike Williams tore it down, and Tracy Moore fouled it. And that's three personals now for Tracy Moore. Herb Suggs has three fouls. J.D. Barnett is sweating. Well, J.D. Barnett played at Winona State back in 66, baseball and basketball. I don't think he planned on playing today. <laughs> He's not a stranger to the Missouri Valley either. He was an assistant at West Texas State in the late 70s, had a hand in recruiting Maurice Cheeks down there. Went on to a small college and then to Virginia Commonwealth for several very successful seasons. The game is tied. And Mike Williams missed and Tulsa has the ball. Free throws. 11.30 to go. Bradley has had a boost in free throwing recently, particularly in the second half at Dayton. They were near perfect. Tracy Moore along the baseline, and he might be cold, but he's still dangerous. Also takes some time off the clock. Out of bounds to the men in blue. Now they want timeout. 11-12 on the clock. The game is tied, and we'll be back with more exciting basketball after this. Now, at Cohen's, the newest touch control microwave from Amana. Save space and enjoy big cooking convenience with easy-to-operate electronic touch controls. Amana's conveniently sized, lightweight, touch-controlled microwave. Just $189 at Cohen's. That's right, $189 for an Amana microwave with nine cooking speeds, easy touch controls, and a free cookbook. It's Cohen's for the latest from Amana. Price, the service, the satisfaction at SK Chevrolet. When we say more for less, we mean it. At SK, we offer free service loaners with new car purchases, so you're never without a car when yours is in for service or repairs at SK. Get all the details on free service loaners at SK, your more car for less dollars dealer. SK Chevrolet, your more for less dealer, Knoxville and Pioneer Parkway, Peoria. FTV, tonight at midnight on TV 25. Well, the game certainly hasn't been decided, and we are far from deciding the North Point video of Peoria's Bradley player of the game. We'll do it later. North Point will make a donation in the name of that player to Bradley University's General Scholarship Fund. Hawkins and Williams with 10 points apiece for the Braves, less with eight. There's Dick Versace and his staff. Three of nine for the Braves in the second half. Six of nine for Tulsa. As you see, Dick Versace has 161 wins in his eight years so far at the Hilltop. 11.07, the game is tied. Frank Bassoni, Mike Dimmick. Hope you're enjoying it. Brian Riley missed the work. Rebound came down to Tracy Moore. Nice little move and score. Moore, a little ball fake. Fake. Really, really opened it up for him. That's only his second basket, but it puts Tulsa in the lead now. Now, with that foul trouble, they're going to stay in the man-to-man. -man. Almost kind of surprising. And again, Mike Williams posts inside. He's got the ball. He's fouled out two players already. Oh, what a fake by Les. Kicks it out to Jerry Thomas, who's stripped. Nice job by the Hurricane on defense. Now they'll be patient. They've got the ball and the lead, but there's a lot of time. Boudreaux fires it up. 
Boudreau that time, he's got seven points by the way, but he did a great job at hurrying the ball up the court. Moore was open, gave it back to Boudreau. Either one of them could have had open jumpers. Also varies the rhythm of their execution. One time a quick shot, the next time a lot of time taken off the clock. Bradley moving the ball. Just under 10 minutes left, Powell gets off the bench. Thomas missed. And now Tulsa with a four point lead and Bradley can't let this get away. The Braves beat West Texas in their last game, but before that, it took Hawkins on three game winners. Wichita, Drake, and Dayton. You learn not to get too antsy even with nine minutes to go when you've gone through some games like that. Braves a well-disciplined team. Tulsa takes it down, the shot clock now to 10. Moss fires out of the dead corner. Hawkins rebound. Bradley looking for the momentum basket. I know Joe Stoll watching the game. And now a whistle and a timeout all by the Braves. There's 9.05 to play and we're coming back right after this. At the silver bullet tonight. Rob, when you get a chance. So you get a caller? I'm thinking about it. Two cores light, Rob. What's there to think about caller? I said I might. Arnold, there were a hundred guys in here last night. She talked to you. Jack, I was sitting on her coat. A very unique approach. Give me the quarter. Rob, you got a quarter. There's no slowing down with the silver bullet tonight. Cores light here. Even though I'm just starting my career, it's not too early to plan for my retirement. That's why today, I invested in an IRA with the First National Bank of Peoria. This specialist showed me how to plan for a secure and dependable future and get a tax break right now. With my income, I'm glad I only have to deposit what I can afford. I'm working hard to get ahead in today's world, and the First National Bank of Peoria is working for my tomorrow. The First National Bank of Peoria. Member FDIC. Solid Gold, tonight at 12.30 on TV 25. Bradley and Illinois State games mean a lot, even if they're just playing on a vacant court in Carlock for nothing. We, they will play again this Thursday, and it might mean first place. Redbirds and Bradley right here, 8 p.m. Thursday night here on TV 25. Donald Powell has checked in for the grade. Jerry Thomas out following the Illinois State game, that is, uh, Thursday night, then this Creighton. This meeting between Dick Versace and his ex-assistant, Tony Baroni. Both of them be interesting. With the clock coming right at nine minutes now, Bradley's four points down with the ball. Tulsa plays the man-to-man. -man. And he looks in for Powell. They've got him in. He didn't get it down. Hawkins rebound. Steps in and scores. does it now for Hawk. Thought it was going to fall for Donald. He was only about a foot away from the basket and it just wouldn't roll, but Hawkins just manages to find position somewhere. Here we go again. Seven rebounds for Hawkins. 6-3, six 6-4. Six Still right there. Tracy Moore went baseline and a foul on Powell, his fourth. So Donald comes in only in the game for less than a minute and he picks up the fourth personal foul. Comes out. And as you can see, really didn't have real good position. Unless you got the feet planted and you're in front of the guy, chances are they're not going to give you the call. Only two team fouls on the Braves in the second half. There's 8.20 left on the clock. Tulsa by a deuce. Moss, who's had 21, gives to Moore. He's free. He missed. And Powell. Time to play against Tulsa. Bradley at eight minutes left. Shoots for a tie. Powell looks down the trigger. He wanted Mike Williams low. See if they run the screen for Hershey here. Plus comes to the left and now whips it around to Powell. In the line, back to down, it's Powell! What a pass by Jimmy Left. 
Lytle had some troubles at first, kind of like a shortstop, not quite getting a hold on the ball when it comes to him. Watch the nice pass. Two men draw to him. Now, has to wait. That gives time for Riley to fly at him. Bounces it in, and it's another three-pointer for Powell, who surely is leading the league in this. And maybe a four-pointer. They called it after the play, one and one. Not during the shot. Unusual call. Powell's got three. Bradley leads 46 to 45. Powell could go to 10 points with this one and a four-point play. Brian Riley, by the way, now has two personal fouls. J.D. Barnett's yelling at the official, the ball went in. It's now gone in three times with four points. And Bradley gets Jones in for Powell. You know, Mike, you can be too pumped up sometimes to play, and, and sometimes it takes a minute or two on the court to, to get in your rhythm because Donald, let's face it, is from Tulsa. Well, he realized he was going out, so he went out with a bang and four points. J.D. Barnett is following the sidelines about that last call. 7.32 left, Bradley by two. Tulsa has been looking a lot for more over the last minute. Watch him on the far baseline. He's number 35. Riley's free and he missed. David Moss. Oh, that worked. He missed. Hawkins saved it. His athletic skills got that done. He hit the ball off Ryan Riley. <laughs> Look at J.D. Barnett. J.D.'s putting the man-to-man -man defense on Ron Spittler. Bradley might have caught a break there. We couldn't, of course, see it. But Brian Riley really reacted like the ball did hit, hit Hawk last. Under seven minutes left. Mike Williams on the low block. He's down there. He steps in. Yes! Well, Mike Williams and the crowd gets louder. 6.38 to go, and Bradley has a four-point block by Williams. Tracy Moore was rejected by Williams. Left. Now will Bradley run the clock? Looking inside. Oh, what a hoop this would be. The crowd is really into the game. Get past Hawkins, beat his man to the baseline. He's in. <laughs> Hawkins took his man to school on the baseline. Bradley by six. J.D. Barnett wants oh, time. And now the score. And here comes the break. Five fifty-six. We'll be back. You probably already know that beer is made from barley. Well, this is what it looks like. Now most brewers buy their barley. One's different. One brewer grows all its own barley and has for over 40 years. Now, why is that? I mean, why not just buy the barley? Hey, barley's barley, isn't it? Now at Cohen's, 25-inch RCA XL100 cover consoles with remote control, traditional pecan, country pine, or contemporary oak. You choose the style. RCA and Cohen's guarantee the quality. Your choice. RCA XL100 cover consoles with remote control, just $5.69 at Cohen's. That's right, just $5.69. And you get all the most wanted features. Channel lock scan remote control, quartz crystal tuning, and your choice of cabinetry. It's Cohen's for the latest from RCA. Dance Fever, today at 5 on TV 25. With 10 unanswered points at the 5.56 mark, Bradley has won Tulsa to a six-point advantage. And the building shows the result. Now, this is the kind of situation that we saw Nolan Richardson Pull out some wins you didn't think he could get as you watch him 
Waved to everybody around here. Barnett with more of a set team. We'll have to see how he plans to come from behind. Apparently hasn't been up by six very much. I think that's the biggest lead. You can't beat part of the old ballpark, and right now it's rocking. Bradley sets up the defense. And also the offense as the crowd having fun. Still six minutes left. See how Bradley plays. Stick to that zone and have Jimmy at the point. It's a base defense zone because they're packing it in. Pulse is going to have to shoot over it. Tracy Moore fakes and goes. Inside Suggs. Rebound the Braves. Trevor Trempe battling the ball and got it. Now don't forget, Bradley has the bonus on the foul line. If they are fouled, they will go to the line for the rest of the game, and Bradley has committed only two fouls in the second half. Hawkins posts up on one side. Mike Williams comes out high. Also makes a good defensive play to get the ball. Also looking to cut the lead at 5.13 to go. Bradley by six. Tulsa's been stuck on 45. Brian Riley short with everything. Hawkins saved it. It's the running Greg Jones. How about it? Foul on Riley, 43. Greg Jones thundering to the basket. Three personals on the other end. Byron Boudreaux flew into the scorer's table. Here's the pirouette by Jones. But it was caused by Riley, and now he'll go to the line for a one and one. Nice work there to see that foul on the cameras as Jones was hooked. He's missed his only try at the foul line tonight. I guess this is still today. Oh. Bradley makes it 11 consecutive points. 4.57 to go. Tulsa has not scored since over the nine-minute mark. Greg Jones, a pair. Bradley's biggest lead is eight. Tulsa will speed up the tempo of their offense now. Under five minutes left. Tracy Moore. Nice play by Moss. Flip to left. Bradley running three on one. Hawkins is held. Suggs got the foul. He has four personals. And the parade to the foul line continues. And now you see the frustration on Tulsa. Three on one break for the Braves. Jimmy waited. Good moment. Hawk was having trouble holding it too. Hawkins with 21 in his last game against West Texas. Averaging 24 and a half for his last five. 15. We should mention it's no accident that he has 15 points. Byron Boudreaux has been doing a superb job on him on defense. He's been getting a lot of help too, so he's been able to overplay and basically keep the ball out of his hands. That's about the only way to stop this guy. A 10-point Bradley lead with Hawkins pair. 4.37 to go, and now it's Tulsa that looks up the mountain. Bradley has not allowed Tulsa to score for minute after minute, and still not. Greg Jones, good relief. Look at Les push the ball up. He splits two. Bradley hunting for its 18th win against only one loss. And the point guard, Les, has gone all the way again. Four minutes left. Boudreaux and Hawkins are really fighting around the lane. Watch them. They run the screen for Hawkins. Low. Les breaks around the side. Clock down to eight. That's the shot clock. Six, five. Trempe does inside. Hawkins turn around. Yes! Hawkins with 18. And we told you at halftime he would explode. He has. And so the break. What an electrifying run by Bradley. 
Tulsa has not scored in about six minutes. It was 45-41, Tulsa. There's a timeout at the 9.05 mark since then. Bradley has just run it up. Tulsa is leading 45-41, to and Bradley makes 16. The 16 run. Unbelievable. This team just does what it needs to do when it needs to do it. And as you see, this isn't just anybody. And now Tulsa has begun, really beginning to look like they're losing it on the offensive end. They've lost their patience. Moss forced a shot. We talked about it at halftime, Frank, and Tracy Moore just never did heat up. He right now has only two baskets in this game. It's going to be his worst game of the season. And I really don't think this team has enough talent around Moore and certainly not enough depth to be able to survive a night when he can only make two baskets. Great job by Bradley's defense to hold Tracy Moore. David Moss has wiggled free for some points, but somebody has to score, and the Braves are very balanced in this one. 18 for Hawkins, a dozen for Williams, and 10 for Powell. Les had eight at the half, and higher, buddy. But uh, he's really had Bradley under his whip again today on those assists. Well, we hate to go beyond this game as get a standing ovation. 3.34 remains, and Bradley has zoomed away from the Golden Hurricane. The point I was going to make is that we can begin looking ahead to Thursday night, when once again Bradley's going to have to play for first place. Illinois State, almost miraculously, with a lot of freshmen, including an all-freshman backcourt, has managed to go 4-1 in conference with a win over West Texas. And so they're going to come into Bradley in a game that is always very unpredictable because of the nature of the rivalry. Now the Hurricane want to get Brian Riley back in the game, but can't yet. They do have Deckard in at 24 from Ottawa. There's a shot by Boudreau way outside. Greg Jones! Rips the ball down and Deckard fouled him and Bradley is owning the glass. Well, Bradley's rebounding advantage. Tulsa gets one crack and with Fobbs out and with Jeff Riley out, Bradley has really dominated the board. There's a look at Riley where we started out with a team today that was very patient, passing the ball around, finding the open now, man, and now with three minutes to go, we're looking at a team that's desperate to get on the board. They haven't done so in more than six minutes. Jones missed. Bradley's had so many defensive stops in a row, he can't count them. 320 left in the game. The Bradley lead is 12. They trailed early on, but David Moss Gets in his 23rd point along the baseline. It's a 10-point Brave lead. Tulsa still has time, but they'll need Bradley to turn the ball over to them. Now they're going to put the full court press on. Bradley will put the ball in the hands of Les and likely Hawkins quite a bit. All the way back, Mike Williams barged in for an easy one. And he's got 14. Under three minutes left. A steal by the Hawk. Here he comes. Foul is on Boudreaux, and Hawkins is too much. He'll go to the line for two. We often say this guy does everything. Well, when you look at the statistics, it bears us out. He is in every single category that the Missouri Valley can think of. Miracle shots has not gone on there yet, but of course he leads in that too. But he's up in the top 15 in steals and in block shots and in scoring and free throw and field goals. And you name it, he's there. He just put another one down. He's shooting now for his 20th point. And when they said that set out to make a basketball player, this is what they look like. Percy up here, Bradley by 14. Coors Beer, Coors Light, Cohen, SK Chevrolet, North Point Video, Peoria, Plaza Video, and Morton. Hope you're enjoying Bradley basketball on TV 25. And Tracy Moore is fouled by the Braves. Jimmy Les picks it up, but with 2.37 to go, it's Bradley, who has turned around. An early deficit, they led up a half, 32 to 29, taking the first lead with 5.27 in the first half, and then turned the second half 
into their in their kind of game. And although some good defense really helped out, some good luck also helped. This man at the free throw line just did not have the kind of day that Tulsa needed him to have. Sitting on nine points now. And missed that. Mike Williams has been a force in this game, believe me. Rebounding. Here's some words between Moss and Rialto. Okay, it's just a foul call down there. Moss fouled Williams. Mike Williams' power on the boards has been really a factor in the game because Tulsa has committed so many fouls right after Bradley has rebounded. The one thing that we miss down there is nobody really has words with Mike Williams. Not, <laughs> not if they're smart. Not thinking people. One and bonus for Mike Williams. <laughs> or living people. <laughs> Chicago De La Salle is high school. He started off in college at Cincinnati and then transferred. And he has been one of the main cogs in the Bradley 17-1 start to this season. Very important factor today when Tulsa was in a man-to-man. -man. He had a lot of key buckets. 16 for Mike. Suggs is free to Boudreaux for two. Byron Boudreaux at 63 to 50 with 220. Bradley's lead is 13. What a second half by the Braves. Jim Les opens it up. Goes all the way. Greg Jones tips. Mike Williams. And Bradley still has it with left. The tenacious play by the Braves. Two minutes to go. Boy, he just put on an exhibition in front of us, just going every which way with the ball. And they never seem tired, and he still is. Okay, what happened there was Boudreau didn't hear the whistle blow, but when he did, it's a foul on Suggs, his fifth. The third Tulsa player to foul out of the game. And that's been a factor, too. Anthony Fobbs, who fouled out of this game, really never got underway. Well, Mike, you know, you've got to sometimes name somebody other than Hersey Hawkins, player of the game, and, and there's a lot of games where you can name a Jim Les, a player of the game, because of everything he contributes all over the court. Trumpy, Jones a good assist today, Powell played well, but... And we can't forget about Hersey Hawkins, who really got him yeah. back into it with yeah. some good shooting, and and he's going to end up with his usual 20 points. Mike Williams, a big game inside, rebounding and scoring. So with 153, we're going to make a decision here in a couple of minutes, and we'll let you at home see if you want to argue with us and see who you would pick as the player of the game. Bradley leading by 13 here as I go back to the line. This is first attempt in the game at the free throw line. And he's crowding that 80% mark again this year. He was off to a fabulous start at the free throw line. They won on, on a little bit of a slump in December. I'd be willing to wager he'd finish over 80% for the season. And the rebound for Tulsa with 1.50 to go. They're 14 down at 64.50. Tracy Moore doesn't take long to put that one up. But Les tracks down the rebound. And here come the Braves. Here comes Hawkins. Missed the dunk. He was at an angle along the baseline. And now the Braves hold the ball and set up a play. A minute and a half. This team has a chance for 20 victories before February, if you can believe it. Russ goes to the corner to Jones, and Bradley spreads it out. Hawkins goes inside and challenges Riley. No contest. He did not have a prayer. 22 for the Hawk. He just... Dipped his head and went by him. Tulsa fires it up and in as Moss hits from outside and immediately calls timeout at the 102 mark. 66-52 in favor of the Braves as Bertolini checks in for the Bradley. Well, we've made our choice. Mike Williams, good work inside, some good work on the boards. He is our North Point video of Peoria, player of the game. North Point Video will make a donation in Mike Williams' name. We're glad to do it. I'd like to
to thank our executive producer, Brad Longwell, our producer, Steve Shaw and Tom Tucker, our director, Ernie Santella, administrative engineer, Ken Coffinelli, all the gang that helped bring these telecasts to you. Associate director is John Crawford, Mark Flusser, and Steve Schmidt are the TDs. Production assistant, Perry Cole, and Chris Coffinelli. On the audio, Richard Willig and Arvin Nelson. Cameras, Frank Blaine, Rich Klein, Jim Teal, and Bud Wilson. Al Marks on videotape replay. Brad Johansson with the staff, and Frank Rice, electronic graphics. They all provide all that manpower that help us bring you these kinds of games. Frank, that's an interesting score. Of course, Bradley's going to get its 18th win, but a Tulsa team scoring 52 points. But really, it's indicative of what the Missouri Valley has become this year. The influx of new coaches like J.D. Barnett, Ron Green, who has Indiana State playing great defense, the usual stalwarts like Illinois State, and Drake, who've always played good defense. Consequently, we see a slower game in the Valley, with the exception of the team that we're watching right here. But on the average, Missouri Valley teams are scoring about 10 points less than they did last year. Tulsa's averaging 68, but they're only giving up 58 a game, and Bradley has gone well over that. And the Braves have had just another will give you what you need when you need it game for Coach Dick Versace and his staff. Well, they're going to need it again on Thursday because Bob Donawald is after a very slow start, getting it out of his team. And there's J.D. Barnett, his first trip. He'll have a lot more wins this year. Oh, yes. This is a good Tulsa team. Len Bertolini there on your picture of the first time in the game. And don't forget, the Missouri Valley postseason tournament is going to be hosted by Tulsa. That's, at Tulsa. that's yes, always sir. an easy place to win. <laughs> For sure. 44 seconds on the game clock, 25 on the shot clock, and a foul on Tulsa. They have no choice. Les got chopped pretty good. Les is, is uh, limping just a bit. He takes a lot of wear and tear during a game, but he walks off a lot of injuries that other people don't play with. Gary Thomas is going to come in for the Braves. Thomas didn't really do a whole lot of the offensive end in his other appearances. Trevor Trippy will step out to a good ovation. But Thomas worked hard on defense. And ultimately, that made a difference. And so did this guy. Trumpy's a, a quiet performer, but very, very effective. Tulsa has the pass stolen by Hawkins. What anticipation. 35 seconds, Bradley by 14 points. Putting it away in the four corners type of offense. Les again is fouled. And he's just mad at himself. He can't make a free throw. He slams the ball into his own hand. He accepts nothing less than perfection in his game. That's Daryl Decker, 24 from Ottawa, that committed the foul. Decker was a really fine high school player. 28 seconds separate Bradley from their 18th win. Les will probably go out of the game after this. He has 10. He did a really good job in the first half with six assists of really helping Bradley get back into it. Remember, they were trailing in this game by eight points in the first half. Les made them both and will get a bow, and he deserves one. Anthony Manuel in. And the captain smiles. J.D. Barnett said it, Mike, just like every coach says, I'd love to coach a point guard like that. And most teams would like to have a forward like David Moss, who just put in two more, and Tulsa called another quick timeout for David Moss. That is 27 points. That's got to be his career high. Yeah, that's half of Tulsa's points in this game. They have 54. Bradley with 68. He has had a super game, but Tulsa went down for about a six-minute period in the second half when Bradley took advantage, and that's why they are going to be 18 and 1. One of the better marks you'll see anywhere in America right now. Yet it's only good enough for a one game lead in the Missouri Valley. And that head-to-head uh, -head matchup with 5 and 0 oh against 4 and 1 will be on Thursday night. We'll have the game at 8 o'clock, and we hope you'll join us then. Then we'll go on to Creighton Saturday night. Don't look at the record there. There's going to be a lot of emotion in that game with Tony Baroni facing Dick Versace for the first time. And also, Tony is just doing a heck of a coaching job at Creighton. I don't believe they've gotten blown out by anybody. And a lot of us thought that team would win four games. He doesn't have very much talent, to, to be very fair. There's the next matchup, as you can see. And without the great records that uh, these teams have in the league, 
that would be an exciting game, but when it's for first place, it's all the more enthusiastic. Freshman guards Mark Kratz and Todd Starks have really improved in a hurry for Bob Donawal. It always takes those guys a little while to learn what he wants them to do, but they learn. Bradley now has Bertolini, Hawkins, Anthony Manuel, Greg Jones, and Jerry Thomas in. The crowd is responding to uh, the scores from around college basketball. Illinois State the winner. Bradley gets it to the Hawk. Here he comes. Bang! Left, the 24th point is the capper. A quick transition basket by the Hurricane. But this one's Bradley's with five seconds. 70 to 56, and the Braves running game came up in high gear. Hawkins, just for the record, had six points in the first half. He's got 24. <laughs> Oh dear. And completes an unbelievable string. Remember when he had six points against Southern Illinois? Since then, he's been going 25, 25, 25, 21, and 24. And now Hersey's going to get the hand as Paul Wilson comes in for Paul Wilson, freshman from Ohio. Look at the Bradley Bend. Some of these guys, Mike, could be players of the game almost every time they step on the court, like the Bradley guards this year, Les and Hawkins. Before we leave you, we want to remind you that Central Illinois' favorite radio station returns to TV 25 next Monday, the beginning of WKRP month. It'll be next week at 4.30 with the Big Guy Week. Two, one, and Moss with a dunk at the gun. We'll count that for his 20, 31st point. 31 for David Moss, but it wasn't there enough as Bradley wins its 18th game of the season over Tulsa, 71 to 58, to stay unbeaten in the Missouri Valley. We'll come right back at Carver Arena right after this. My interest in Shea Buick is easy as no secret. We're time-tested and customer-approved. In fact, the General Motors Buick Division is consistently rated sheer, high, and customer satisfaction within our Chicago zone. Well, now we've moved into a nationwide group of 188 dealers. And you know what? We still rank among the top three. No doubt we were number one Buick dealer in Central Illinois. The numbers prove it. Count on sheer. Just for you at Wiser Eye Care, a winter eyewear special. A complete eye exam, plus extended wear contact lenses, plus prescription eyeglasses. A $250 value, just $149 complete at Wiser Eye Care. That's exam, extended wear contacts, and glasses, $149 complete. What a value. Get more than eye care, because I care. And I care. And I care. At Wiser's Eye Care. Trusted since 1898. At the movies tonight at 6:30 on TV 25. With Bradley down 45 to 41, they sizzled off 16 points in a row, Mike Dimmick, and that's a winner. They did just enough, as usual. Good defense and some Hersey Hawkins with 24 points, and they are 18 and one. We'll run down the scoring very quick. Mike Williams with 16, Jim Ellis 11, Donald Powell 10, David Moss with 31 for Tulsa. And that's it from the Carver Arena. We'll be with you again on Thursday night at 8 o'clock when Illinois State comes calling. Remember, they won today. They go 4-1. and one. So it's Bradley 18-1 and one and 5-0. and oh, The final score once again, the Bradley Braves 71, Tulsa Golden Hurricane 58. For Mike Dimmick, this is Frank Bassoni. Thank you. Good afternoon.
The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of 25 Sports.